what did you struggle with? You for me, say? I think it's for me. It's I think if you care, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. But it's just uh, I think your job as a goalkeeper isn't to be great technically, great timing. I think your job as a goalkeeper is to deal with pressure. I think ninety percent of goalkeeping is you're there thinking, and I think. Um, like most people know, as soon as you start thinking too much about something, that's yeah. when it makes it really difficult. So I, um, I think I've always struggled with it, but I think it's also if you really care, if you're sensitive, if you think about things too much, um, that's so like a lot of the best, like a lot of the best guys in the world, we would say now aren't necessarily the most talented and technically gifted. I think they're there for a reason and not a lot of the players at the top level, I would say their biggest attribute is their mentality. Yeah, so so talking a bit about the mental part, like what was the the hard part? Because it is very hard and there's pressure, there is mistakes, there is yeah. being confident all the time. So what what did you struggle with? You for me, say? I think it's for me it's I think if you care, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. But it's just, uh, I think your job as a goalkeeper isn't to be great technically, great timing. I think your job as a goalkeeper is to deal with pressure. I think 90% of goalkeeping is you're there thinking. And I think, um, like most people know, as soon as you start thinking too much about something, that's yeah. when it makes it really difficult. So I, um, I think I've always struggled with it. But I think it's also if you really care. If you're sensitive, if you think about things too much, um, that's so. Like a lot of the best, like a lot of the best guys in the world, we would say now aren't necessarily the most talented and technically gifted. I think they're there for a reason, and not a lot of the players at the top level. I would say their biggest attribute is their mentality and the yeah. calmness. Um, so that's why I wish I knew now what I, when I was younger. I wish I know. I wish I knew then what I know now and I wish I had somebody like me to guide us who's been through it all and everyone said I was the most naturally gifted and at, at kicking the ball the most naturally gifted goalkeeper when I was young but I never got anywhere near the level I should have and um, I think it was to do with the pressure and little things like taking the pressure off yourself as a goalie by have something else to run alongside your career. It's the most basic thing, unheard of in football, but clubs don't want you to do it because they want to have you at their beck and call. But I think having something to run alongside your career is, is the biggest thing. And I think people say give everything to football. I think the worst thing you can ever do is give everything to football because it makes it really difficult. You've got to have some other things to take the pressure off. Um, you, don't, you, you can't control what happens on a Saturday. All you can control is the preparation and how you prepare being a goalkeeper and how you prepare for a Saturday. So um, little things, I think, can make a massive difference. And I, I, I played at a really good club and some other good clubs, but I never had one bit of advice from a coach or from anyone that I would pass on now. Um, you, have, you go at 17 as a professional and they just take it. You're a professional. They don't try to make you better. You're just who you are and you're just meant to train every day and get experience so yeah that's that's really interesting that you haven't received help whenever you became a pro because that's something that is really what is it under estimated undervalued is the mental part that we've just been talking exactly. about like it's, it's something that they go in and they want you to play and they want to prepare you physically but mentally right now i haven't experienced it and i haven't seen it like it's something that's coming up for sure but still yeah. not there's so many young kids out there who who fail at 20 because they just don't want to. They and didn't the know. The difference is, they do, like, so yeah, it was funny. I went to watch a game. My brother was playing, and the two goalies were maybe getting 100 pound a week to play, um, like semi-professional. And the di the, the technique, the, I just watched the distribution. The, there were two decent goalkeepers, but distribution-wise, they were better than a lot of lads playing at the highest level. So it's like, this is what people need to know. It's absolutely nothing to do with talent. Talent's maybe the fifth or sixth most important thing. Um, and what we've realized now, someone with the right mentality, if you've got the right mentality, anybody can be a goalkeeper. Anybody can be a footballer. If you don't have it, you make it really, really difficult for yourself. So I think um, it's, uh, it's easy to say better technique at the lower leagues than some guys at the very top. People think because they're at the top, they are superior, both technically and everything, um, physically, technically. But 
um, I think it's it's all about the mentality. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And if you want to give some little to listeners out there, some little advice on how to get that mentality or how to have that mentality. I could never. You, I'm not a psychologist, so I couldn't no. do it. Like, but little things like for me. I felt as though I played my whole career with a big weight on my shoulders and what that does, it stops you from playing with freedom. It stops you from being as fast as what you are. Everything, some games I played and I could, I didn't want to run six metres for a goal kick to kick a ball because I was just like so um, drained. And uh, so a little, I think obviously the biggest thing is doing things like working hard every single day, the most basic thing. But if you go into a game thinking I've done everything possible, to prepare myself, I've ate the right foods, I've lived in the right way, I've trained the right way. I think you're going to, if I went to a game, I would think, well, whatever, what will be, will be, because I've done everything I possibly can. But for the professional side, like I said, I think having something to run alongside your career, every penny I earned, well, every penny I paid for mortgage and bills throughout my career came from my football. And uh, goalkeeping, there's enough pressure there without thinking you have to earn the money to provide for your family and to pay your bills. So for professionals, I think anybody, it should be education, should be the most important thing up until 21 and have something else. If you're not the educational type, you have to do something like a trade or something to run alongside your career. And um, that's what we try to say to these young goalkeepers now. I think uh, we've come up with the idea of maybe getting these young, talented lads that are nice lads to start their own academy um, under our name and uh, it could give them the income which will, uh, which will pay their bills, their mortgages in the future. And the key to being a top player or being a footballer and being able to play, I think, is play football because you want to and not because you have to. I played because yeah. I had to my whole career because I had to pay things. Whereas if you have something else that pays your mortgage and bills and stuff, I think you, all of a sudden you're playing football because you want to and it just takes the pressure off. And I think it would have helped me massively. Um, obviously, it's, I'm not a sports psychologist, but what the advice we can give is stuff I don't think they can give, to be honest, because um, we've been through it all and failed, really. I always feel as though it's like a failure, but I did okay. I always say mentally, I think I overachieved because of how, what I was like. But for talent and technique, I got nowhere near where I could have. I think that's, that's very interesting because Alexander and I talked a lot about it. We had an episode with uh, Hannah Bromley as well as a sports psychologist as well. And yeah. I've seen you post stuff from Dan Abrahams as well. And it's becoming well known nowadays that it's so important, especially for our position, because we deal with a lot of, as you mentioned, pressure and stuff like that. And we, if we make a mistake, it's, it's tough for us to, to recover from it, but I couldn't agree more that the mental part is, is such an important aspect nowadays. The mistakes, isn't it? It's the fear of making mistakes, and that's what, and doing it in front of people, in front of a big crowd. You might have two months on your contract, and uh, you might be worrying about that, and then you've got that added pressure, because if you make mistakes, what, what would happen to me is I'd make a mistake, and then it would ruin the rest of the game. It would ruin my weekend. I would take it into the week, it would affect my next game, and then it can affect your career, and it's absolutely crazy. Um, there's no point in worrying about it, is there? And for young goalkeepers now, the best advice you can give is, if you make a mistake, be thankful you've done it at a young age. If you do it at 13, it's brilliant, because remember, work on it, and make sure you don't make it again when you're 26 and you're playing for a club. And I think... Um, I think they've got, people have got to encourage kids to make a mistake, know the limitations, know what works, know what doesn't work. Whereas you get kids that just want to play safe because they're so worried about making a mistake. So for me, I went on loan from Rangers to a team in the next league down and I thought I had to go there to be perfect if I wanted to go back to Rangers. But Rangers sent me there to go and learn and make mistakes and learn about how to be a professional footballer. And I didn't get the advice then. I didn't get, nobody told me that's why I was going. I thought I was going to be perfect. So when I made a mistake at 20, playing a team in the lower league, the second league in Scotland, I thought it was the end of the world and I thought my career was over. And it's crazy. And that's played a massive part in my, in my career. 
and I just didn't have this education. And obviously, I expect a club like Rangers. It's an amazing club. Looking back, you think, how did I not get that education? But like I said, there's not one bit of advice I've had from anybody I've worked with goalkeeping-wise that I would pass on. And I think, um, obviously, I would never blame anybody else for not doing how I shouldn't. But obviously, I didn't get much help at all. So, But um, like I say now, I think training's brilliant, the way they train. The goalkeepers, a lot of places, um, they do. It's like 40% is outfield training. And in a game, I think the stats are like 80% with your feet. So if you're training outfield, you're running, you feel better because you're fit. You're not doing the volley, 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 goalkeeper training. Um, that doesn't happen in games for me. And I did that, I must have had 10,000 volleys in my life. Um, but I think it's brilliant that they're training this way. And um, I think it's great because you're going to be fitter, you're going to be better on the ball, you're going to be more comfortable. And um, I think I would have enjoyed being a goalkeeper a lot more. Um, if I did that throughout my career, I think it would have been, I say for fitness, I think it's, you should, why not be the fittest in the team as a goalkeeper? And I always was, but it was like, I just wanted to be doing more and more with the ball and which is going to be beneficial and help you in games. Yeah, exactly. Like that's something that I've been trying to tell people that they're like, oh, you just have to do goalkeeper practice. I'm like, no, because 80, as you said, 80% of the time, in a game, I use the ball with my feet. It's There's only like four, five, six saves maybe, but the rest is just distributing, being open, being in the game. And as you mentioned, like when I was younger, it was like 40% outfield training. We were a lot in the oh, really? in the drills. When I went in the club I grew up, it was a lot with the drills with outfield players. And being as a goalkeeper, then they had like a possession game. And then we were in the end, just being yeah. like a back pass guy. And that really helped me a lot. Well, that's it. I did not. I did maybe one session my whole career on that. And I just think it's that's it. I think if you break it down, like the men, you're probably thinking in the game. You're probably thinking eighty percent of the time, or ninety percent. You're probably using your feet nine percent, and you're probably using your hands one percent of the time. I don't know if that's it'll be something similar, but you do in training. You do ninety percent with your hands. Don't you? And like that's normal. I don't know about you, but I mean, in general, yeah. goalkeepers, goalkeeper yeah. training is this. And I just think you need to do stuff that happens in a game. And our training, if you watch our sessions, we don't post, we need to post a lot more. But our training, you'll see so many mistakes, goals, parries, everything. Whereas you watch some top level goalkeeper training, even the England national team, it, I can see why people like to watch it because the sounds are nice, it's all nice handling, nice catching. But I think it's, um, is it realistic? And um, that's, uh, I think you need, you need to have things that are going to happen in games. Like I say, I've, I think I've had 10,000 volleys in my career and in a game, I've, I'm, I haven't had one yet from six yards or 10 mm -hmm. yards. Yeah. And then when even half volleys, I've had thousands of them. And the one that I got in a game in my 16 years, I think I dropped it because I thought it was too easy because I do it all the time. <laughs> so it's... yeah. It's um, but now, like you say, I think it's uh, it is, things are changing a bit, and there's still the old school uh, guys. But I think it is changing, and um, but what we want to do is we want to just we're all about like the mental side and the mental health because there's a massive problem in football with um, a lot of guys that really really get down and they see that one good game can take them on a track to be to get loads of money, and then another another one bad game can take you to um, out of the game, so I think that's what we want to really want to get over. That it's um, the mentality side is so important. Cool. Uh, and talking about that, you you mentioned in the beginning that uh, in in England they don't care if you if you're not high enough, they would just cut you off the team, and that's the main yeah. reason why you also went to Scotland. Um, I would I wouldn't say that. I would say like. I, there was Sheffield United asking us to go and there was a couple of teams in England but my, when, my, when I was 15 Middlesbrough my dad spoke to Middlesbrough and uh, they said if you're not six foot three they wouldn't look at you so that was the attitude and I came through at that time when it was massively in, uh, uh, it was all about height I think Peter Schmeichel had a big bit to play there <laughs> and everybody wanted a Schmeichel but for me it was uh, it's not we you'd like I think his son's more our type of goalkeeper. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I think he's brilliant. 
but 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 talking about the height, all three of us is quite small compared to uh, goalkeepers around the world nowadays. Uh, is that why you also focused on working on other aspects of the game, like distribution as well? No, nah, the distribution side was always. I never. I don't. I never worked on it. Everything was. I was fine that way from when I was a kid. But I think when you are smaller, you've got to. I don't think I was brave enough in games. I should have done a lot more. But I never got one session in my life uh, dealing with one-on-ones. And when I went to I went to America last summer and saw a lot of guys doing that, I think it's brilliant. But that can be the difference. But that can help your mentality. Because if you do that, if you do a, a block in a game and get hit in the face or the chest, the supporters absolutely love it. And they think, oh, he loves the club. He wants to be here. So little things like that. I don't think for me, I don't think height was... Of course, it would have put some people off, but I would never, ever blame that on not getting where I should have been. Um, obviously, like I said, my biggest problem was the worry and the anxiety and worrying about making mistakes. So the height, I think I was good enough. I had enough talent to do well, and I got the opportunities to play a club like Rangers. Um, they're, not, they're, they're a bigger club than a lot of the clubs in the English Premier League. So if you can, And people always say if you can play for them because it's so hostile and so demanding the fans, that you can play anywhere. So I think now as well, what is a good one is the fact that it's changing. We always say Guardiola, would he want a big six foot six goalkeeper who can't use his feet? He's got no. the best guy in the world. He's got the best guy ever with his feet in goal. Yeah. And I think Edison could have been 5'10 and I think Guardiola would have took him. And I think now it is changing. I think the, the, it is coming away from that. And if everybody was like Guardiola, there will be no big goalkeepers in the game, really, I don't think. I think they'd all be around between 5'10 and 6'1. So I think um, football's changed, and I think it can change for goalkeepers. And I like, see, when I came through 2003, I think um, it was all about the bigger, the better. Yeah. But we're trying to educate. We want people to have good timing, good technique, um, be fast, be good on the ball be able to carry the ball and be the 11th player and I think that's when you've got a massive advantage so um, I think it is coming away from bigger is better I think um, of course if you've got a, if you've got a six foot five guy who's unbelievable technique and talented and great with his feet of course you're going to the bigger it's going to be better than having someone at six foot if they're exactly the same technique and talent but usually the smaller the guys are the more natural they are yeah I I agree. And to talk about like what has been your motivation to keep playing until now, 30, 33, because some of my motivation have been that I've had so many coaches who've told me that you're too small, that you're never going to make it. And that just kept me motivating me throughout my career this far. And I'm not planning on stopping right now. So what have you prove coaches wrong by saying that they, you were never going to make it or what has been I a big know. motivator? For me, it was the other way because from when I was six or seven, my school, everyone at school said I would be a professional. When I was 17, I went to Glasgow Rangers and they said I was the most naturally gifted goalkeeper they'd saw and they expected us to go to a better level. So really, um, it was, it's funny because like, see, I was, they expected us to, but I always remember my coach at 18, he was quite a hard guy and he says the only thing that will stop us from making it to the highest level is myself and I think it was it was uh, it was spot on really but um, I've had let's see you get these knockbacks and of course you want to prove people wrong but what I found is because the goalkeeping position is all about uh, mentality I think you need to go into games cool and composed and I think it would be great if you could go into games and think I'm going to use all this motivation to prove him to prove him wrong to prove him but for me, when I thought about stuff like that, it would just put more pressure on and I would struggle more because then if I made a mistake, not only was I disappointed, but I was like, shit, I've, uh, that guy's going to be happy as well. I haven't proved him wrong. So it's like, I think it's different for all different people. Obviously, your way is that way. and uh, But it all depends on, on your mentality. And maybe it would have been good at if 17 if people were saying to me, you won't make it, you won't make it. Because then I would have, it would have been the kick up the arse I needed. Whereas at 17, when people are saying, you're really talented and you could go the, to the highest level, maybe that was the worst thing that happened to me. So it's, um, but I wish, I wish you could go in. But sometimes I couldn't even go into games and use my determination because 
when you're anxious and worried, you just kind of yeah. hit. You've just goal kick position. I think it's about being composed. Right? I think as a player, it's better because if you've got all that anger and determination, you can go and take it out on the other team. You can run. You can put your foot in. As a goalkeeper, you can't get into the game. You're relying on the game bringing you in. So it's, but it's good. See, I wish I had your way. I wish I could do that because it might have, uh, it might have helped me.